Hello everyone. Um, in this episode, we are going to uh, take a, 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 a start a new series of uh, lectures where the subject is uncertainty and risk. So up until this point, uh, you probably almost always uh, have ignored the relationship between um, uh, action and or alternative and outcomes. So in standard, you know, demand theory, supply theory, uh, uh, the, 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 we, we don't really usually talk about this relationship. Um, when we talk about alternative in demand theory, uh, we assume that a consumer chooses a bundle, a basket of goods, apple, banana, etc. And so action is basically, you know, uh, one of the available alternatives. And so when the consumer picks an alternative, like a basket of apples and bananas and other goods, well, there is no... Uh, uh, the outcome is actually what the alternative is, right? You get apple, you get banana. So this is what we call a deterministic world. Outcome and alternative are the same thing, uh, or the action and the outcome are the same thing. Um, however, um, the life and, and most of the decisions actually uh, incorporates or requires a decision on their uncertainty, right? So when you choose a bundle of goods, for example, apples and bananas, well, so the alternative is some apples and bananas, or so bundle. But the thing is, the apple, uh, the, the consequence of buying, you know, an apple uh, is, is not just an apple, right? Maybe it's a good apple or bad apple. And without tasting it, you may not know whether it's a good apple or bad apple that you're about to buy. Same for banana. So, all right, so each alternative uh, is actually different than uh, outcomes. So you may get some apples and bananas, uh, but the thing is, p potential outcomes are like apples and bananas, everything is bad, horrible. Apples and bananas, perfectly fresh, juicy, nice apples and bananas. Good apples, bad bananas, or the other way around. Uh, so it's like, again, so the alternatives and the outcomes may be different when there is uncertainty uh, or when the life or, or the decision problem is not deterministic. So this is the environment basically uh, that we will be looking at. So there's an alternative or action. And then when we choose this alternative or action, it's going to lead to set of outcomes. And the thing is, or the problem is, you don't know which outcome is going to be realized. Which means you don't know which outcome will occur, right? So when you buy the apple or when you buy something from, say, Amazon, you don't know whether it's going to be actually a good uh, uh, item or a bad item or you don't know whether it's going to arrive on time or not. So the outcome, uh, so which exact outcome will be realized, you don't know that before making your decision. All right. So therefore you choose to buy, you know, a cell phone from seller one or seller two. So these are the alternatives, seller one, seller two, th seller three. But each seller actually offers you a potential outcomes. Right. And so therefore outcomes, usually what you care, uh, but uh, alternatives are what you choose. OK, so how do we sort of model uh, uh, this framework? So uh, we're going to start with what we call a set of uh, consequences. I'm gonna denote it by Z, all right? Sometimes I use this or sometimes this, but uh, my, my handwriting, this looks like two, so I'm gonna prefer to use the first one, all right? So Z is the set of uh, consequences, set of consequences. Uh, we normally look at, um, you know, finite, infinite set of consequences. We don't care. But for simplicity in, in these lectures, you may just assume that set of consequences is a finite set. All right. Um, so let's suppose um, I'm, I'm going to keep using this example. So let's suppose the Z includes uh, three potential consequences, A, B, and C, all right? And so think of this as a lottery, all right? So uh, outside, uh, I'm sorry, uh, the outcomes of this lottery are like winning uh, a, a $1,000, all right? A winning, I don't know, a $10, and basically winning nothing, $0, okay? 
Um, so these are the consequences and I do care about those consequences or the outcomes. Um, but the thing is, and so my preferences are about consequences, but sort of indirectly, my preferences will be formed uh, over the alternatives, right? So in the standard demand theory, we ignored this part, the outcomes. We just looked at the alternatives. And so we said, uh, let's look at the preferences over alternatives. But because the, in a deterministic world, alternative outcome were the same thing. And so we were basically talking about exactly the same preferences over here or there. But here, it's different. My preferences over outcomes is something. My preferences over alternatives are something else. I'm going to come to the alternative uh, more formally, but here my preferences over outcomes is, um, well, obvious, right? Uh, everybody prefers more money to less, kind of. Right? But it could be something totally else, right? Uh, for example, it could be a, a car you're getting. It could be, I don't know. I mean, if you're making an investment on stock market, you know, winning, uh, for example, A could be making 10% profit, B could be making no profit, and C could be making, you know, 10 or 20% loss, right? So these are potential outcomes. So this is like, if it is a stock example, uh, this is a lottery example. So if it is a stock market example, A can be, uh, uh, I don't know, 10% uh, gain, uh, a, a win, let's say, and B is, you know, 0% uh, uh, gain or win, and this is like uh, minus 10% uh, win. So it's like lose, basically. And the question is, obviously, I want to have this outcome. I prefer this outcome to this one and then to this one. Uh, but then there's the alternatives. All right, so the... Um, what we, I mean, how we usually uh, sh show is that small z is an element of this capital Z. So z is an outcome, all right? So we call it as an outcome. And uh, an alternative is a probability measure on z or probability distribution over z. Okay, so we're going to denote it as, as follows. Uh, let's denote LZ is the set of, set of all probability distributions or probability measure on Z. So what type of animals are uh, in this set? the probability measure. Well, I'm going to denote, for example, P or Q as an element of L of Z. All right. And basically, these are like, um, I mean, you can think of them as vectors or in fact, well, they are functions. All right. Functions that map Z. So P, Q are functions that map Z into uh, a, a, a zero one interval. All right. And here is the property that they should be holding. So for any, oops, for any uh, outcome, all right, in Z, uh, P of Z must be zero, one interval, all right? So P of Z basically denotes the probability of this outcome. So the probability of winning $1,000 or probability of uh, making 10% profit in the stock market, all right? Um, so therefore, it should be in between 0 and 1. And on top of that, summation P of Z, where Z is coming from Z. So when you sum up all the probabilities for each uh, outcome, well, this should add up to 1. No less, no more, exactly 1. All right? So basically, probability of winning 1,000 plus probability of winning 10 plus probability of winning 0, if these are the only outcomes, all right, in, in my set Z, so the probability should add up to one, all right? No less, no more. Uh, so that's it. So more formally, uh, we can basically write uh, L of Z is, uh, you know, P in uh, R plus Z, um, such that, so this is sort of the, uh, 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 the number of elements in Z such that summation Z is in uh, small Z is in Z, uh, Z set uh, 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 P of Z is equal to one. All right. And um, 
By the way, this shouldn't be uh, R plus, but this should be, right, 0, 1 to the power Z, because again, P of Z, so each of those elements should be in between 0 and 1. They cannot be more than 1, they cannot be less than 1, because they are probabilities. Um, so therefore, um, the alternatives are elements in the set. And, and the outcomes are the uh, elements of set Z, okay? So once again, there's two layers. Layer one is set Z, the outcomes, all right? Uh, think of a lottery, there's three prices, winning thousands, ten, or nothing, all right? A an alternative is a lottery you basically pick from uh, this, uh, this set, so a lottery, for example, a P, uh, let me denote it as a vector. Uh, this is one example. It basically says you're going to win A, outcome A, or you're going to get outcome A with one half probability, outcome B with one half probability, and, and C with zero probability. Uh, or another lottery. So we're going to call elements of this set, like P, Q, we're going to call them lottery all right so your alternative is nothing but a lottery uh, we just you know name them as such so another alternative or another lottery could be for example one third one third one third so everything is equally likely another alternative um, p prime let's call it zero zero one which basically means you're gonna get uh, uh, outcome c for sure okay for example and so, there are like infinitely many possible alternatives uh, in, in my set LZ. Uh, I don't know if you know that, we, but we, we call this as a simplex in Euclidean space, all right? So, uh, 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 the alternative set is, is, is a simplex. Um, so, in order to make a connection between what you have seen up until this point is remember in a sort of a standard consumer theory, I have a budget set, right? So, P times X plus P X, P Y times Y, uh, less than or equal to income. So, that gives me a set on X Y diagram, uh, uh, this triangle. So, all the alternatives bundles in the set were allowed, all right? So kind of similar thing if, uh, if, 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 if you consider my alternatives are, uh, are element of a simplex, all right? Um, so if I have, again, if I have two alternatives or two outcomes, I'm sorry, not A, B, C, but for example, uh, A and B, all right? So therefore this is zero, one, this is zero, one, right? Um, so what we must have, uh, we cannot have the probability of A pro plus probability of B uh, more than 1. So it has to be exactly equal to 1. But the thing is, uh, we cannot have any point here. I mean, probability of outcome A plus probability of outcome B, this cannot be less than 1. So therefore, therefore, if I have two outcomes, my simplex is in fact, uh, so this, this guy uh, just just this straight line, all right? So this is A, uh, this is P of A. Um, well, yeah, this is P of A, this is P of B, all right? Uh, so the probability of getting outcome A, probability of uh, getting outcome B. So therefore, this is, you know, this, this straight line is basically, um, sorry for terrible graph. So this straight line is basically, uh, oops, L of uh, Z. As I said, once I have Z, uh, A and B only, all right? So a simplex in this case, when I have two alternatives, it's just, you know, th this, this straight line. If I have uh, three alternatives, uh, we can draw the simplex as a triangle, for example, um, etc. okay? So if I have, I don't know how many, but N many outcomes, uh, well, it's, it's going to be, well, again, we call them simplex. Uh, in uh, Euclidean space. All right, um, very good. So uh, in, in the next video, I'm going to start talking about preferences over alternatives, meaning preferences over lotteries. 
uh, coming up.